Hi. Um, at the age of 13, I was diagnosed with a learning disability. Uh, dis <laughs> there it goes, disability. <laughs> Words and languages, they all get mixed up for me. So um, this was a bit of a relief for my mother because uh, the teachers would say to my mother, um, you just have to accept that your son is below average intelligence. And um, so I had my socially constructed dyslexic badge. Thank you very much. And I ran away from the education system as quick as possible and went into the arts. And of course, dance was my uh, tool of choice. No words, nothing to mess up, just pure movement and the language of the body. So I went into the dance industry, and that lasts about a uh, good 20 years I was in there, performing in different companies around Europe. And then comes the time where retirement is knocking on the door. It's a very short career, and that happened to me about a year and a half ago. So I decided to go back to the academic world. And finding myself in Iceland, Suffering the trauma that I did when I was at school with words and languages and everything, I decided I was finally going to go to the university and face this demon and learn the language full time. So I go into the language department and I start getting into it. But then I see that the, um, the teaching that I was experiencing was still not including my way of thinking. It was very um, deductive learning, as in the information is all over the place and you have to try and gather it and try and form an understanding of it. And what I came to understand through the arts is I'm an inductive learner. I need to see where I'm going. I need to see the steps, each step before I go there. And I need to get the big picture of everything. And what I found is that I wasn't able to push this trauma back. And as the course went on, and it's very audio-based learning I came across, that audio, I mean like they, you write on the board, and as you read it, your mind is uh, translated through audio, and then the teacher is reciting the information through audio deliverance. And I found myself, once again, becoming isolated from the rest of the group. But this time, there was a higher frustration, because I had been in the arts, I had realized that I was intelligent, and I was finding myself, once again, feeling completely unintelligent. And this became even more when I went into the exam. Um, I was doing, uh, listening to Icelandic, and I didn't realize that I had to write. That information was uh, missing. So I was going in there thinking I was just doing yes, no, yes, no. And then I had to actually write sentences. Not even really possible in my own language. I started doing it in Icelandic and the trauma just came in. <laughs> my whole world just came tight and small. And I saw that little seven-year-old again in that classroom, isolated. And I was struggling. I thought, now I'm an adult. I can handle these emotions. I can, I can deal with it. But unfortunately, that wasn't the case and break down. I manage to get through, I leave there as quickly as possible, I'm going down the hill into the kind of uh, marshland, and I look back and the university lit up on the hill, and it's almost like they could have some violin music going, and there's, there's tears rolling down my eyes, I said, you may have punished this seven-year-old again, but I'm not seven, and I'm coming back for you. Very melodramatic, I know, but... Uh, and I was told, you can't change the university. It's a very conservative structure. It doesn't move. It's rigid. And it doesn't... It's just... And I was like, no, that's not possible. It's created by humans. Humans are creative. The system isn't a solid mass. It's a, it's a creation from a human decision. So socially, we decide the systems that we live in. So therefore, it can be dismantled through discussion. So, next day, I go to see the program manager. And I have in my hand, imaginary, I have my sword. And I'm going to see the dragon's lair as I go down the hallway. And I, I, I knock on the door and I go in, I go, OK, I am tired of being oppressed. I am tired of you leaving my kind of learning style out of the education. I have a right to learn, and this is my problem. And she said, oh, very interesting. <laughs> um, would you like uh, to help us uh, um, create the course? Suddenly the dragon disappears, the sword goes, and my heart is like beating like crazy. What do you mean, create the course? It's easy to complain. It's easy to have, whoa, woe is me, but now I have an opportunity to actually do something. So I go, okay, let's do it. So um, 
She said, what do you have then? Okay, so this is, this is my system. Because I teach dance, and I teach dance to boys in schools that have sometimes problems with education. I, I get them inspired and motivated and all this kind of stuff. So I thought, I'm going to take that technique into the academic learning system. So I said, on the internet, there are 300 words that are the basis for the English-speaking uh, learning language, well, actually written learning language. Do you have this in Icelandic? She gets this big Icelandic book out, dictionary, opens it up, boom, there's the list of the most frequently used words. So I said, why are we learning this? I don't know. Because we learn maybe somebody goes to the restaurant, somebody goes to the hospital, somebody goes somewhere else, and you can sit in a class and never actually be motivated by the actual subject the person's talking about. But everybody needs to know the most frequently learned words in the language. I said, right, okay, this is what we'll do. We'll use the internet as well. We'll do YouTube, cli YouTube clips for every single word on there, so people can learn individually in their own time. So if they fall behind, they can catch up. Then, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create uh, a class. I'm going to teach people how to actually choreograph movement. And then with each word, we're going to have a movement to it. So I went and talked to the students, and I used to think I have um, special needs, that I'm the only person in the world that suffers from this learning, blah, 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 blah. And I go and talk to the students, and two-thirds, about 50 in the class, two-thirds said, yeah, yeah, I want to give it a go. Yeah, yeah, me, 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 I want to give it a go. Suddenly we have this volunteer class of people learning Icelandic through movement. So each word we're doing, it was an org, e, ow, up, we were just putting all these things together. But the thing is, the teacher couldn't make it. So I was actually an Icelandic teacher suddenly. Very bizarre situation, but what was wonderful about it, it was there was no hierarchy system, because I was creating the class, but I couldn't speak Icelandic. And so we had the course going uh, uh, alongside, and we had our, our group, and we were sharing information, we were helping each other as we went along. And what happened is you started to become involved, you started to actually give, there started to be a community, there started to be meaning within the class. And and there also there's a limitation. There's so many, so many words you can actually do with your limbs. So the more vocabulary we got, the more creative the, the language was going. So everyone's going through all these sorts of stuff. And, and we had all this wonderful... Uh, we got to about, I think it was 150 words. We got it all into movement. And the idea from there was what we're going to do is when we had the movement base, we're then going to make up questions. So you go into a group and you go, OK, this is the question I'm going to make up. So you make up the question of movement, you go and dance it to somebody, go, aha, I know what this is, and they go off and they come back and they make an answer, and then they do their dance, aha, and they go off and do a question, and then you have the sharing. And also, the idea with the creativity is, uh, I know I've come across some language learning where they actually say, bat, and they say, do this. What I decided to do is that everybody creates, we create this language, this movement language for ourselves in here. So as you're creating the language, in a state of creativity, your mind is opening. And sometimes I find in the academic world, your mind closes. And the more you have to concentrate, concentrate, and go, no, 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 you're getting this tension. But actually, when you create, you open, and you expand, and you expand. So the idea is that then the language just falls in. So it becomes an unconscious growth and not a conscious manipulating and grabbing. And according to some neuroscientists, from uh, an early age, it's the right side of the brain that is actually uh, creating the language through emotion and, and engaging and, and, and grappling. And then later it shifts over to the left, which becomes more analytical. But maybe for some of us, we still have to go through that process. We still have to go through this creative, emotion-motivating uh, need and then going over to the more breaking down and uh, categorizing in, in the language. So then the idea of this is that then we would start to strip the movement out, and then we'd actually role play based on things that are important for the individual. So they would have a partner, and that partner would support them to express what they needed to say in their language, in, this, in the community that they were in. So the language was really coming from the heart. And this is what I found when I studied in the arts, it's all about emotion. It's about skill and training, but it's about motion and motivation. And my experience being isolated in the academic system was it was about detaching the mind from the body and analyzing 
and breaking down. And what I was suggesting is we bring that mind back, was it Descartes, separation, dualism, we bring that mind back into the body and that we use everything, that we actually generate, we get a nice lump of emotion and we stick it into the learning process so that we are motivation and we're generating for emotion to learn. So that the pathway to education doesn't have these, these holes that you, some people, f like myself, fall in and you have to crumble up. And there's so much effort just to crumble up out of the hole that you can fill these holes up with narratives, uh, metaphors, uh, play, movement, so that you can slide your way to education. So that the children of today that have more of a big open mind thinking, like myself, more than a, a specific thinking, can also go through the education system without having to go through the trauma that I had to go through. Thank you very much.